Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to explore gross revenue options within AI. So how can AI help you to grow your business and what kind of tools, what kind of strategies and tactics will help us that. For that, I have Brian Boyd with me on the show. He's the head of revenue at bearsquare.com. He's an experienced marketing and technology leader with over 15 years track record of driving success for startups and fortune 35 companies. Leveraging his expertise, building authentic partnerships for customer success, Brian has helped notable brands such as JetBlue, The New York Times, Sanofi, and MedLife achieve their marketing tech goals and unlock significant revenue growth. So let's welcome him to the show. Hi, Brian. How are you today? Hi, Klaus. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very well. Brian, you're talking about AI. That's a relatively new topic. What was your first experience with AI? Uh, that's a great question. So my first experience with AI was uh, probably the same awe that a lot of people saw when the um, image generators came out and just the the quality and um, it just it was just amazing what what could be done uh, with uh, a few simple text prompts. Um, I, I can remember going back and forth with a CMO friend of mine um, on a daily basis just sharing the latest of what was created and it's just just unbelievable yeah ai is obviously moving very fast on that ai is also transforming marketing and e-commerce business in general which areas do you see changing the fastest so far i think you know given that we're now about a year into the post gpt era um i think we're seeing you know text content really coming on although you know, what we're seeing with video is also, you know, pretty amazing, same as the image generators were uh, not too long ago. Um, so certainly around content production, whether that's product descriptions, um, depicting the product in, uh, in everyday life, um, we're probably not too far from a place where you can really see products at work in your home. I and mean, we've seen some of that with um, paint colors and things like that in the past, but truly being a more immersive type of uh, relevant experience, I think is going to be key. Um, but there's also, I think, a huge shift on the data side. Um, we collect a lot of that as MarTech professionals and um, how much of it gets used varies from place to place, but uh, it's safe to say that not a lot get used or, or certainly not 100% no matter where you are, um, and the ability to to go through all of what's collected and start to generate either meaningful insights, which is what Bear Square does, or start to, you know, really personalize for uh, for shoppers. And um, it's going to be amazing. And I think if there's one last one, not to make too long of an answer of this, but I think uh, search is going to be huge, right? Um, I've got the Brave browser that I use on my on my phone, and I'm already getting, you know, summaries of multiple sites into one cohesive answer for certain searches. Uh, and I think when we start to think about that in terms of commerce, it's it's going to be huge in terms of the most, um, the highly rated, the the highest quality, you know, product or item that you're you know potentially looking for could be surfaced nearly immediately. Mm -hmm. I think you touched a couple of very interesting things there. So first of all, yes, um, we saw that coming up, more and more um, apps are coming out, more and more tools are coming out for e-commerce merchants, for online sellers, for DTC brands, providing them with more and more data. And then obviously very quickly you come to a point where you're completely overwhelmed with all the data that is available, but then reading out of it. And you mentioned search engines and that for sure, and I'm with you on the same page, that will change. Um, I think Google will have to change because we already see the first results coming out there. Now, I understand at bearsquare.com, you help with sort of creating clarity around data and finding a better way to deal with all the data that's coming in. Tell me a little bit about it. Oh, sure. Happy to. So uh, Bearsquare really got its start you know, 15 or so years ago as a data consultancy, mostly around marketing data. So deep knowledge in analytics, in, um, you know, a lot of the, the BI and reporting platforms and, and how to take what data is collected and create the appropriate dashboards and things. 
And as, as most kind of consulting companies do, you start solving similar problems time and time again. And uh, specifically, you know, what we uncovered was there's a gap in the market in terms of, you know, whether you call it site merchandising or category management uh, and revenue and understanding all of the things you can do to affect revenue and how successful those are. Um, I mean, that's a full-time job for multiple people in, in most organizations. And we were helping to solve that from a visualization standpoint and realized that, hey, we build upon that and, and generate a product. And so our revenue accelerator solution does exactly that. It's kind of your AI uh, analyst that reviews category performance and tells you, hey, this category is uh, well above plan or well and below plan. And sometimes this is probably not talking too far school for most of your viewers, there isn't generally a good revenue plan anyway. And Bear Square can actually calculate an expected revenue uh, based on ever, all the activity that's happening and then use that for comparison and say, hey, the we're performing well against these revenue targets or not. Mm -hmm. Now, most of our listeners are on Apple Podcasts, on Spotify. They don't have a visual idea of what's happening. And you talked about categories. Can you talk me through what that means and how I can imagine, um, how can I visualize? And I'm a very, I, I learn visually. So that for me, that's actually a really interesting see, um, or a topic to talk about. It's like, how can I imagine the data being visualized? Sure. Uh, great question. So um, we pride ourselves on not only being able to present visuals, but all, all, everything, all of the insights that are generated on BearSquare are actually um, shared in plain text. So they're very easy to read. It's clean language. Uh, it's very easy to understand what's happening, why it happened, and what to do about it. Again, you're going to get a nice clean text summary of that. But in addition to that, we we have some tools that visualize um, expected performance over a period of time. Um, so a nice kind of graphical way to show um, almost looks like a river moving through time in terms of it gets a little wider, gets a little smaller, depending on activity to show, hey, this is the expected range of, of revenue uh, for a given product category. And so when I say category, I mean things like shirts, dresses, tops, uh, to use kind of an apparel metaphor. But in addition to that river I mentioned, we also have, you know, kind of the stream, which is the actual number overlaid on top of it. So you can see real performance is inside an expected range or outside of it as well. And then the last piece of data visualization that we do is a full funnel analysis. So every step of the commerce funnel from, you know, um, viewing a product to putting it in your cart to checking out um, all of the steps within that, we visualize the impact of what's happening in each of those steps uh, for, in terms of revenue performance for that given product category. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to revenue optimization, there, there's a lot of different data sources coming into that. Uh, what kind of data sources do you support and how do you connect to them? Yeah, we can connect to just about any time series uh, set of data, but the primary ones that we use are going to be your analytics platform. So your Google Analytics, GA4, uh, Adobe Analytics. Um, we can connect to, uh, you know, aggregates of those data sources as well. If some people are bringing them into any kind of BI tool uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of that, but about 75, 80% of the insights we can generate come just from analytics data. There's so much that's captured that we're able to do that. And then we enhance that with a number of, uh, additional qualitative or quantitative, uh, you know, data sources as well. Everything from a revenue plan, if it exists on red sheet somewhere, uh, promotion plans. We can look inside the email promotion system and see, hey, this is when these things, uh, these messages are going out to people. Uh, I'm in them. Um, in addition to that, 
we can look at the news. We can look at weather and see what what is this having, you know, on the site performance. So it's pretty interesting. That's definitely very interesting. So as an e-commerce business, how can I leverage all this data effectively to to make qualified decisions going forward? Yeah, it's a great question. And the the I think the thing that that holds most e-commerce companies back is from the time that you know that there's something you want to work on, there's a revenue deficiency in the shirts category. We'll use that example again. From the time that you know that to the time that you've done the analysis to understand why the market have moved on, you may have missed your opportunity to do anything about it. Um, and since we do this on a daily basis and you're presented next morning with what's happened as well as recommendations mm -hmm. on what to do, um, the, it's pretty easy to take advantage. And um, if there's an error in the email promotion, let's say it's pointing to the wrong product, most people know that, hey, people aren't going to go and then search for the product you're promoting and you've lost that customer. Um, mm -hmm. Well, now you can know that that's the case and submit it, you know, send a new email or an update. You can be cheeky and fun about it if you want to, um, you know, however you as a brand want to react to that, but you have that ability to react, which is, you know, which is important. Um, the other thing we do is we can, we can tailor how many insights are surfaced, right? So depending on the size of the team, you can focus on, hey, I only want the high priority ones or I want to see all, uh, you know, no matter what what the discrepancy is. So it's uh, it's kind of tailor-made to the organization. Mm -hmm. Do you have a, a real-life example on a campaign or on a use case that one of your customers must have used? Yeah, I do. Um, we work with uh, an, a, a women's apparel brand, um, and they're one of a portfolio of, of brands you know, under you know uh, under under management. And so, as you can imagine, in that scenario, there's generally a pretty um, resources are generally spread fairly thin on this company. Now they're doing exceptionally well, um, but I can recall it was a Friday afternoon. We had just got connected to the data, and I was like, "Great, what a good way to end the week. This is going to be fine." We'll start to generate some insights and have a conversation sometime next week. First thing Monday morning, uh, you know, took a look at the data. I've got people from our team knocking on my door like, hey, you need to see this. And uh, we need to get on the phone right away with this with this particular company. What we spotted was revenue was down for multiple product categories. And the AI agents that are running within our platform they identified the same root cause for each of them. Um, and essentially it was kind of a dual, dual factor or two, two causes. One was an email that had been scheduled to go out for the weekend did not. Uh, and the other was that a promotion that should, a promotion code that should have lasted through the weekend also did not, um, uh, had ended on a Friday. So you've got two kind of factors happening and a fairly significant drop in new. Um, so we saw that and we said, okay, hey, you know, we need to flag this because we just started, you know, looking at the data. We thought we had a couple of days before uh, we would talk to them. So we need to talk right away um, and come to find out with, with that company, we looked back and we saw this was the same thing occurring over like five weekends. And the, the correlative, you know, the impact of, of, the cumulative impact of all of that was about 5% of annual revenue. So it was no small thing. Turns out Sunday is their biggest, you know, kind of revenue day uh, for that company. So it was pretty impactful and just, it, you know, one of those things where you're like, Hey, we're, we're doing some cool stuff here. Uh, Cause we're able to help people spot some of this stuff, you know, right away. Yeah. That's a huge impact. 5% of the annual revenue. Uh, so, you talked about you found that out very very quickly now as far as i know ai usually needs some time to learn from the data that is available so that the algorithm really can kick, can kick in how does it work from your side what's usually the average time before you really see the maximum results coming out from ai um 
you know, it's it's great because we connect to the system as if we're a user. There's no plugin or um, pixel that needs to be put on the site. So that speeds things up. There's no time to collect data. Uh, we can read from um, what's already kind of been collected. Mm -hmm. uh, and because of that, within 24 hours, we start generating insights in terms of revenue performance. Um, you know, day over day, revenue performance by category um, or other timeframes as the customer wants to see. If they want to see week over week, then obviously we need to look at a, a week's worth of, of data to see. But generally, we can look back whatever time frame the customer would like to see it in and already start to compare today to a week ago. Uh, well, so it's it's pretty immediate from our standpoint. Mm -hmm. No, it's it's obviously with bigger organizations, you have different people in marketing departments and fulfillment departments and so on and so forth. How does the system of bearsquare.com work with that um, so that the right person gets the right information or message at the right time? Yeah, great question. So we're able to uh, kind of either map the categories, the product categories to the individual um, responsible for that category. So the merchandisers or category manager, uh, if it's a team of people, it can go to the team as well. Um, <clears throat> and we're able to share the results with, um, you know, with productivity or, or uh, teams like Slack, uh, sorry, products like Slack, Teams, Jira, uh, Workfront or others, right? So we can actually output the, out the, the results and say, hey, here's something you should take a look at and then have them come back into the tool to see what the result is. So we fit right into a company's main workflow, uh, could be sent via email as well, whatever, uh, whatever's necessary. Mm -hmm. Who's your perfect customer? Are there specific industries or verticals that are easier to adapt to such a system than others? Uh, right now we're focused, you know, pretty much on e-commerce. So perfect place for us to be chatting uh, with you. Um, it's generally a multi-product or multi-category retailer. So if it's a single product, uh, Bear Square is still beneficial, but probably not to the full extent that it is across, you know, a, a larger landscape. Um, and it's those uh, retailers that are doing, you know, in the tens of millions of year or, or higher in terms of revenue. Um, and I put a caveat on that because it's really, it's also a matter of, you know, how much uh, promotion and marketing are you doing as well. So if you if you are a starting business and you've got low revenue, but you're really investing in, you know, uh, media buys and email promotions and things of that nature, well, then there's activity there that we can help to influence. So it's really kind of a matter of, you know, the activity that an organization does to generate interest and in traffic and sales. Mm -hmm. Now, AI is moving very, very quickly. There's new features coming out all the time. And I understand you told me before you're in the works of a big update for bearsquare.com. What does that involve? What can we expect? Yeah. So when we first started building out the platform, um, we sat down with our team of like 40 data analysts and said, okay, given a result, what would you do? And we turned uh, those into AI agents. So that kind of analysis that our people would do, we you know basically were able to turn that into an AI agent. And sometimes they run multiple times for a given result. Um, so the platform uh, update coming out in about a few weeks at this point will uh, have uh, an expanded library of those. Um, it looks at additional data sources. So we're able to look at um, not just um, a broad base of kind of competitors. We can look at named competitors for a given retailer. So if you really want to know what X, Y, and Z competitors are doing, we can look at those, um, you know, uh, and see what's happening in the news and, and see what effect that might have. Um, and one other thing that we're, um, uh, will be included is we'll have the ability to do session replay as well which you know, some of the larger quality platforms out there are able to do, but we'll be able to do that um, 
uh, that as well. So if there is a result and you're interested to see what the buyer journey was like, we could replay a lot of those sessions, which is, uh, which is a, a big update for sure. Mm -hmm. Now you're at the top front of artificial intelligence and what's happening there. What's your forecast? What's happening within the next 12 months? I know it's, it's very difficult to say, but uh, <laughs> will it cut will it cut jobs? Will marketing departments fall away or what's what's happening? I, I don't think marketing departments or, or analysts are ever going to go away. Um, there's always... Uh, I'm very impressed with what AI has, has become over the last 12 months, and I, I'm sure it's going to grow by leaps and bounds. But at the end of the day, we're still talking computers that are programmed by people and, um, you know, uh, no APIs are 100% perfect. No data feeds are 100% perfect. There's always things that, um, you know, we're going to need to do to kind of make sure the machines run the way that we want them to. Um, so I don't think that, you know, jobs are going to go away as much. I think we'll take on new skills and learn to interact with data in a more human uh, way. So being able to ask questions, being able to um have a conversation, if you will, with the data. That's another thing that we're working on. Uh, we see that coming, you know, fairly soon. Um, and, and speed, right? Speed's just always going to continue to increase. So I think those are big things. Um, I think my biggest prediction for the next 12 months is really going to be around adoption. Uh, we're, you know, kind of, I think, coming out of the testing and trial mode of where does AI fit into my organization. And in the next 12 months, I don't even think that's going to be a question um, It's th because it's going to be prolific and uh, it's going to touch upon almost every aspect of, um, you know, of the business. Um, so it'll just end up being everywhere. And who knows, maybe the hype around AI as a term will start to diminish a little bit because it'll just be, you know, be like the Internet. It's just it's just around. No, I totally agree. I think you need to adopt to AI or as a business, you have a problem going forward. Walk me through the typical onboarding process of a new user. What steps are involved? How long does it take to get up and running? Yeah, it's pretty quick. So as I mentioned previously, we we connect to the analytics um, platform as a user. Um, so there's no, again, there's no pixel, there's no tracking tag that needs to be installed. So we don't like site performance at all. Um, what was it? Um, the Heisenberg principle, right? That, that the minute you start to measure something, you start to affect it. Um, I think that holds true for a, a lot of tags that get placed um, on things. But uh, once we're connected there, we the system will do an automated kind of quality review just to make sure that the data is you know in the way that it needs to be. Sometimes we need to have the the customer make a few tweaks to tags or uh, things of that nature. But again, usually within a day or so, insights just start being generated. And um, we do like to take a look. There's some calibration that can be done, certainly according to customer preference. But within a week, we're, we're generally showcasing the first results um, and, and able to get that, uh, get that going. So it's, it's a pretty, I think that's the other amazing thing about AI in general is there's so much automation inherent in it that, um, you know, long deployment or implementation cycles or things of that nature are, are going to start to become uh, a bit antiquated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How does your pricing structure work? Yep. So it's, uh, as you can imagine, we're, we're turning through a lot of data. So there are some volume bricks that come into play. Um, so, you know, we typically look at uh, the volumes that we're, we're looking at and, you know, revenues as well, because we want to, we're in the mode of, we want to help as many people as possible and we're able to do it fairly cost effectively. So, uh, you know, we try and make sure that we're, uh, we're not gouging anyone in terms of price, right? It's a, it's a fair price for the value delivered and, you know, it's a pretty, pretty easy equation from that standpoint. Okay. Excellent. Before our coffee comes, coffee break comes to an end today, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet? I, I don't think so. I mean, it's, um, 
uh, if anything, I would say don't be afraid to experiment. There's lots of great tools out there aside from Bear Square, um, and it's it's an exciting time to to explore new things and and be surprised and just hold on to the wonder of it um, as you see it because you know it's easy to get get overwhelmed or or be like wow this has replaced me and I, I don't I don't see that happening. Yeah, I think you said hold on to the wonder of it. It's it's a once in a lifetime thing that's happening there, and I, I think we should fully embrace what we're seeing coming up there on, in the future. Where can people find out more about you guys? Uh, bearsquare.com. So it's B A R E S Q U A R E. So um, not bear as an animal, bear as in uh, uh, without without something. Um, so that's where we are. Uh, we're on LinkedIn and social media as well. So, uh, but our website or, or LinkedIn is probably the, the best. Um, I think you'll start to see us at some of the relevant trade shows and things as well uh, as the year progresses. So uh, that'll be exciting also. Okay, I will put the links in the show notes as always. Then you just one click away. And for our listeners, there are some good videos on the website. I watched them. It gives a very good and quick overview of what the system can do. And I would just say, go there, have a look. Brian, thanks so much for your time today. I think it gave a good overview of where we are right now with AI when it comes to e-commerce marketing and how it can help business owners to grow their business. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you. Pleasure. Hey, Klausia, thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.